I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And today, as part of our equipment series, we are going to go over different things that you could, should, or might use to do your dog's nails. So regular nail maintenance is something that a lot of people struggle with. And a lot of the reasons why is sometimes because they kind of just make it an event instead of just making it part of your dog's regular routine. I suggest when you're first starting out, you start out with like a really tired puppy. I also like you to do like one leg at a time. So like you might be just playing with your puppy. You might trim the nails on one leg. By the time you get to the fourth nail, they're like, oh, what are you doing? Maybe you're able to get the dew claw in there and get that done. And away you go. And then your puppy is starting to get agitated or worried about it. Then I would just stop and brush or stroke or let your puppy fall back asleep and then move on to another leg. Um, in the salon or in some kind of professional setting, I suggest that you do your dog's nails in the bathtub and kind of do it the same way. You're shampooing your dog, you're working your way down one leg and you do the four or five nails on that leg if they have dew claws and then continue bathing and work your way down another leg. I think that this makes a big difference um, in our dog's general enjoyment or the stress level that they have of you doing their nails. So kind of now that we've gone over the concept of doing the nails and remember that nail maintenance should be, you know, a weekly thing whenever possible. Now let's move on to some of the things that you could, should, or might use when doing your dog's nails. So first of all, you know, the most common thing is probably a pair of nail clippers. So if you think of the nail clippers that you use on your own nails, they are a scissor type, right? They have two blades that close together, even though they don't pass each other, those blades still close together. That gives a nice even cut. I even use human nail clippers on my very young puppies and cats. It tends to do a really good job. So when I'm picking a nail clipper, I like also to have one that does have this scissor action. So whether it's, you know, this smaller type or a larger one for bigger breeds, it still has that scissor type action. I do not like, nor do I recommend that you use a guillotine type nail trimmer, which has a hole and basically one blade like a guillotine that goes up and cuts your dog's nails. First of all, I think this is less efficient. It leaves more jagged edges, but worst of all, it tends to twist the nail a little bit, especially as they get dull and they get dull twice as fast because they only have one cutting surface going through that nail. And really it's very uncomfortable for your dog and just doesn't do as good a job. Now, many of these nail clippers that you will see will have this guard on the back. So you can see it here and you can also see it on this trimmer, this guard. So what that guard is there to do is it can help you in the beginning so that your whole dog's nail, if the dog coughs, sneezes, tries to get away, lurches forward or backwards, or your hand is on steady, it's not going to like take off the whole nail because the nail is going to be stopped by that guard. So that's a little bit about basically nail clippers and the type that we want you to use, whether you have a smaller dog or a larger dog, we want you to use this scissor type nail trimmer. So let's move on to maybe really small dogs. Let's move on to maybe finishing a nail that does have a jagged edge. You can get a dog nail file. You could use your own nail file or one that you're not going to use, you know, but a human type one. What I like about these dog ones is they kind of have this little trough. So it kind of makes the dog's nail sit in this trough and you can simply you know, you could do a small dog, you could do all their nails with this. It's gonna take a long time and not be very efficient. But what these are more better for is to just take off those rough edges on your dog's nails. If when you're cutting your, the nails, you feel like you get those edges. Now, the creme de la creme or what I like to use on most of my dogs is a, um, a Dremel tool, a nail grinder. So they can be a Dremel tool that you could buy at the hardware store. You just have to make sure that the different bits will fit on it. You could use one of the sandpaper bits that comes with your Dremel tool. Um, here I have the Andis. So this is made for pets nail grinder. And I love this one personally because it's cordless. So it just like plugs in, you charge it up. Ones with a cord are just a little bit um, more cumbersome, especially when you're trying to get at that angle of the nail. 
The other thing I like about this is that it's multi-speed. So when you're first starting out, you can have it at a lower speed, but I like to have it at the highest speed possible because I want my job to be done like as quickly as possible, especially when I am working on dog's nails. Now, when it comes to using a nail grinder, whether it's a pet one or a Dremel, you can get what is called a Dyma groove. So on this grinder, we have a Dyma groove and it has like a groove for the dog's nail to sit in similar to this file. And it has this diamond coating. So, well, I really like this. They're actually hideously expensive, but they are worth every single penny because of several things. First of all, the weight, you're only ever gonna buy one, right? So I've had mine since they first came out. I use it all day, every day. Um, and it has this groove that your dog's nail sits in, but it does the job so quickly that you are literally spending probably 25 to 30 percent of the time you used to doing your dog's nails so it's like literally 50 to 70 percent faster than any than using the sandpaper block or any other grinder that i have used um and it doesn't get hot right so again sometimes nail grinders can get hot and that heat can cause your dog to have that sensitivity so i really love the diamond groove on a dremel if i have really long nails i'll use a nail clipper to get them down then i'll grind them or file them quickly um one thing i will say whenever you are using a grinder of any kind please if your dog has long hair put a snood or a sock that's cut off on their head holding their head and ear hair back and the same thing with you tie up your own hair with a hair tie because um i personally have never done it but i have seen quite a few people get their hair stuck it just gets completely wrapped around because they're not thinking or they move their hand and yeah big hole in their head and it hurts okay so we can't talk about doing our dog's nails without talking about some of the things that we need in case we accidentally cut the quick. So of course, you know, if you're at home and you've done this, you could use cornstarch, right? So the very act of cornstarch being there, the cornstarch is going to kind of slow down the blood flow a little bit just because it's like, you know, a barrier that the blood has to work its way through. And hopefully you've just done a little nick, etc., and it's going to clog it up. You could also use black pepper. Some people say this works better than cornstarch because like the pepper actually kind of cauterizes it a bit. I don't know if I really believe that, but there are some things out there that I really like. So there is quick stop. It's sometimes called, you know, this one's called quick blood stopper, but they're all the same kind of thing. It's an ingredient that is made specifically to stop your dog's nails from bleeding. And for some reason, here we go. I got the lid off of it. So um, you want your quick stop to be very powdery, right? So you can see how this is coming out of the container in a powder form. When it gets damp, so you have left the lid off of it or water has somehow gotten into there, it is going to be chunky, maybe even one chunk. And by the time that happens, this is not as effective. So the drier, more powdery this is, the better it is going to work for you. One of the reasons why I will personally spend a little bit of extra money when I'm buying Quick Stop and buy three or four smaller containers like this um, to have in my kennel, my salon on the road with me, instead of one big container is, yeah, you guessed it, the bigger container over time, dampness gets in there. And by the time you're halfway through it, or at least, you know, maximum two thirds of the way through it, the bottom is just one big chunk. And it just doesn't do the job that you need it to do. So something to remember when buying your quick stop, buy it in the smallest container. You're still, you're going to save money at the end of the day anyway. Now, a new product on the market that I got introduced to at Crufts Dog Show this year is called Colocline. And so this is a hemostatic collagen sponge, which sounds and actually is quite fancy. And this actually stops the blood flow of basically anything. Actually, um, it got a lot of press because it was used in the battlefields in Ukraine and they would just put it into soldiers. It is made from chicken collagen. Um, it's completely safe, so it can be in a soldier's wound. You don't even have to take it out. It will dissolve in the body. But what this does is that it starts the reaction, the clotting process upstream. So if you have a dog that has like a nail or that got cut much shorter than one, a little teeny tiny piece of this. So even a piece that is like this big 
you would just put it on the bleeding nail, hold it there for three to five seconds, and it's gonna stick there. And by the time it falls off, bada bang, bada boom, the nail is completely healed. One of the reasons that I really like this product, and it might be difficult for you to get if you're watching this in North America, much easier to get if you aren't. One of the reasons that I really like this product is if you have ever cut a dog's nail and you've put some quick stop on it, it does do a great job. I'm not saying that it doesn't, but it does hurt the dog, right? The actual act of that powder hitting the blood does cause some pain. I personally feel that like some dogs don't really care about their nails being ground or like you cutting, cutting the quick, but they actually care about the quick stop. And this is completely pain-free, which is really why I like it. If I make a mistake, it's there. Um, and you can, you know, once it's open, I like to keep it in a little Ziploc package. You can put it back in the spoil pack, but um, it is just a really interesting product. If you see it out there, maybe ask your local distributor if they're ever thinking of bringing in this product, it might be worth it. So um, I hope that this helps just tell you a little bit about the different things that are out there for you to do your dog's nails when it comes to nail clippers, nail grinders, or a simple little nail file, as well as some of the things you could or should have on hand in case you make a mistake and nick your dog's nails. Um, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought, and as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium, and subscription content, and we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications, that way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.